my voice a little bit. <clears throat> uh, but we were just in negotiations uh, with the Majority Leader's Office uh, about <clears throat> some conditions uh, in terms of achieving uh, human rights milestones <clears throat> based on uh, House Resolution 128 uh, by Chris Smith. And Chris, why don't you talk about okay. that resolution? Hello. I'm Congressman Mike Hoffman. A warm hello to my friends in the Ethiopian community. Chris Smith, what an extraordinary leadership you have on the Law Foreign Affairs Committee. And all of us must pray in our own way today for the passage of this resolution because we know that the Ethiopian government is pulling out all the stops uh, to defeat this. And so today, the United States House of Representatives will have an opportunity to vote on House Resolution 128, supporting respect for human rights and encouraging inclusive government governance in Ethiopia. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to call attention uh, to the government of Ethiopia's continued pattern of repression and violence against its own people. And I urge the House of Representatives to vote on House Resolution 128 the supporting respect for human rights and encouraging inclusive governance in Ethiopia resolution. This resolution calls on the government of Ethiopia to take clear and decisive steps towards becoming more inclusive, more democratic, and more respectful of the basic human rights of its own people. I stand with you today uh, at a very challenging time for the people in Ethiopia. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome uh, former Congressman Michael Thank you. Well, it is so such an honor to be with you again. Uh, today is a is a great day as we celebrate uh, the Battle of Adwa or Adwa in, in uh, Amhar, a, a day that. The Ethiopians defeated the Italians in the first Italian-Ethiopian War. A day of great pride to the Ethiopian people. But today we also grieve the loss of 157 lives on an Ethiopian flight. I stand with you today, shoulder to shoulder with you, as we grieve, as we pray. Now I can remember a little over four years ago, standing with you again, standing with you when Ethiopian Christians were brutally executed by ISIS in, in Libya. And we stood together then, and we prayed then. And I've been so proud to stand with the Ethiopian people. We fought some big fights. With, uh, in the Congress of the United States. And we won those fights. We won those fights. And I look forward to standing with you again. God bless you. We, uh, we have to pay the due respect for the Honorable Mike Kaufman, who meant so much to us. Uh, from everything that I, I, I wanted, Really, he doesn't need any introduction to our community. But I, there, there is one thing that stands uh, in my mind, is uh, when the congressman went to the U.S. Um, House on the floor uh, to call and challenge the, con the conscience of America. That day uh, shall live truly as one of the most remarkable times that can only be paralleled by uh, the ex-emperor Haile Selassie when he went before the League of Nations when Ethiopia was invaded and challenged the world body that today it is Ethiopia but tomorrow it shall be you. That famous speech that I've lived throughout history. I don't know anyone that has ever done uh -huh. 
fully to challenge the conscience of the leaders, the political leaders of America when it came to the suffering of Ethiopia. I can't tell you how it's been an honor to have to work with you. Uh, your humility, your humbleness breaks me. Um, many Ethiopians truly um, feel the same way about you, what you have done. Um, you have taught us also how to, for us to stay engaged civically for the benefit of our community. For, for that, um, in behalf of our people, I would like to welcome you to this stage so you can address. So I really want to have a very to recognize. It um, was a remarkable journey working with the Ethiopian community and you you allowed me to be part of your community and you honored with me with allowing me to represent you in Washington DC. And it was through the leaders of the Ethiopian community, many of you are here today, Deacon Yosef, uh, you above and others, that inspired me to fight for you in Washington, D.C., but sometimes uh, you did so much of the fighting. Uh, there were times when I would set up meetings in Washington for, for you to present the case to congressional leaders. And I think we did that on three different occasions where we got stopped and the Ethiopian government was putting everything behind stopping Resolution 128 to where it wouldn't pass. And, and it became this test of wills between an oppressive Ethiopian government and the Ethiopian people who were fighting for freedom. And uh, it, um, there, there were so many twists and turns in that battle. But I believe that that when we won, really when you won, it was what we won, that it was part of the catalyst that led to the change. A change in the government. From, from a government that was so oppressive against its people, that the United States was supporting a government giving them ammunition to fight the war on terror, but they were using that same ammunition that we were supplying them against the Ethiopian people, against peaceful protesters, with live ammunition, killing them in the streets. And it was really like the way the United States supported other regimes that were oppressive to the people, but they were anti-communist. So we supported them. We looked the other way. And we were looking the other way in the Ethiopian government. Looking the other way because they would help us on the war on terror. And they threatened us. They threatened us. That if we pass this resolution, that they would not cooperate with the United States on the war on terror. And so there was under tremendous pressure from my own colleagues that said it is more important to win the war on terror than it is to address the human rights abuses in the country of Ethiopia. And it took a lot, and so, that it, it was, once we passed the resolution, the government changed. Prime Minister Abbey is the future of Ethiopia. And I will impress upon my successor, and the other colleagues I still correspond with in the Congress of the United States to support this Prime Minister, to support the new government of Ethiopia and their right to be And, their right to be and so uh, it is uh, such a blessing. And let me just close with this, because this, this accident was so sad today, uh, loss of 157 lives. Let me tell you what I thought about when I heard about the accident. Because what they, one thing they said is, I think there were five people from the United Nations aboard that flight. 
And one of the things that we worked on was, was with the High Commissioner for the United Nations that to send in uh, human rights observers into the country. And the government was fighting that. And uh, that was one of the key provisions that we had in the resolution. And so I remember calling the, the UN Commissioner who had, he says, you know, we have this office in uh, Addis Ababa uh, of human rights observers, but they can't get, a, they, they can go and leave Ethiopia and look at other countries in the region, but they are not allowed to inspect anything in Ethiopia. And so uh, um, that it was, uh, I remember then uh, once the, uh, asking the UN uh, High Commissioner of Human Rights saying, can, if we pass this resolution, can you do this? Can you deliver? Can you send, uh, do you have the resources to send people out and inspect these detention camps and inspect all these human rights abuses to, to, to ensure that what the government says, if, if they say that there's change, that there actually is change. Can you do that? And he said, yes, we can do that. And, and, and the sad part of it is that some of the losses today, and, and all of them are tragic, but some of the losses today are the very people that were doing those human rights inspections. And let me tell you this, the minute Prime Minister Abbey took, over, took um, uh, the government, those UN human rights observers were allowed to go anywhere in the country at any time. And uh, I can't tell you how many meetings I have with the ambassador, the Ethiopian ambassador of the prior, of the prior government. And uh, even one time, the foreign minister and the ambassador came pleading with me to, to, to uh, pull this HR 128 and not go forward with it. And then they were so, I mean, they were so nervous, you know, they were just so nervous uh, that, that it was so consequential to them in terms of what the outcome would be. And uh, even one time, the, the foreign minister said to me, well, you can come to Ethiopia and, and you can, you can, uh, uh, try and resolve these differences. I said, oh, we're going to pass this resolution. And we did, and thank God for the changes that have taken place. I believe they will continue. I am so optimistic about the future of this great country, Ethiopia, and this relationship with the United States that is now so different, thanks to the leaders of this community that helped me pass this resolution and helped me create this change. I'm just Namaste, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything.